All right, let's bring in Bonson Group founder and CIO David Bonson. So, David, you're not a doom and gloom guy. That's one thing I love about you. But I don't think anybody's buying what KJP is saying on that stage about housing. Do you think the American dream of housing is on life support right now? I think we have to define what the American dream for housing is supposed to be. Is mm-hmm. it supposed to be people having a home they can't afford? Mm-hmm. I thought, as a child of the 2008 crisis, it was sort of the seminal moment of my professional career mm-hmm. that we learned that lesson. That's not the American dream to have a house you can't afford. What President Biden wants to do here is he's misidentifying the problem, Brian. He says, let's give a credit to people, a a tax break for them to be able to afford a down payment. Down payments are too high. Houses are too high. What does that do? This stimulates more demand. Mm -hmm. We have a supply side problem, which is what you were talking about, Jackie. There's not enough supply. So how are they going to get more supply by giving people other people's money? They always want to transfer wealth instead of build wealth. We need new housing stock. And the reason Lennar is missing the shipment order has nothing to do with demand. There's plenty of demand. Mm -hmm. The problem is that they can't get stuff approved quickly enough. Mm -hmm. It's state and local environmental regulation. Ah. Excellent point. All right. Let's talk about grocery prices because they are up. Um, more than 20% on average over the course of the last three and a half years. In some cases, some items, 30%. There's a new survey out that says 80% of Americans realize that when they are shopping at the grocery store and they're not happy about it. So I think about this as a voting issue in November and um, number one issue that people want change on. Yeah, it's one of those areas where I'm torn on because I don't think there's any doubt politically this just simply hurts President Biden. You could debate how much of it really should. In this particular case, grocery prices are higher for a lot of different reasons. And some of this inflation is policy driven and some of it is not. But if those who believe it's just government spending too much money pushed bananas up, it's a little more complicated than that. We've had four presidents in a row who spent too much money and inflation didn't come until now. And I really believe it's mostly about labor shortages. We need more people working. And oil prices. Well, and oil prices as well. And that tends to be much more geopolitical, but it doesn't have to be. We could take control of our own destiny. Mm -hmm. We choose not to be the marginal producer as Mm. we should be. Yeah. From one California resident to another, I want to talk about this latest proposal. California, along with New York and Illinois, they have proposed bills that would apply warnings to gas stoves. They are saying that gas stoves are environmentally detrimental and unsafe. Your thoughts? Well, I think it's silly, but I do think it's interesting that they're now admitting they're saying it. We went for about two years where they denied that they were even saying this. Um, you, you identify me as a California resident. I'm one who moved to New York to pay lower taxes. <laughs> wow. Okay, nice. so that, that gives you an idea of how bad things are in California. <laughs> Gas stoves are just the latest example. A lot of policy that's driven by headlines and symbolism and no substance, and it hurts lower income people that cannot afford to upgrade mm. to the new environmentally correct appliances du jour. It's just silly California stuff that we've come to expect. Next time I'll say from one X yes. California transplant yeah. to another X California the transplant. The gas stoves are obviously dangerous if you do the wrong thing, but if you do the right thing, they cook your food, they which is better totally than awesome. Well, everybody believes right. they cook better than electric. And when we talk about something being dangerous that we've been using for 75 years, yes. I just think we're once again looking for a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. I'm the GameStop guy today. Uh, GameStop shareholders voted down a proposal that said the board had to self-identify in all these categories as part of whatever, a DEI move. GameStop said, no, we're not doing that. It seems more companies are saying no to that kind of stuff. What do you make of it? You're a guy who does a lot of activist shareholder. Yes, I am. And it's not just more companies. It's more shareholders, as you yeah. said, which is the owners of uh. the business. And what the owners of the business are saying, we agree with Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream. We w- want character that matters. We want competence. We want performance. We don't care about these other issues. And this is really where this toxic, uh, excuse me, Texas stock exchange stuff is coming from. Mm-hmm. They, they're really? trying to get in front of what the NASDAQ was trying to do, saying we're more interested in the sexual orientation gender and race of board members than their qualifications. All that matters about who's on a board, if you're a shareholder, is are they qualified to do the job? Yeah. Period. Right. Um, I, see, everybody poo-poos this Texas idea. I think it's huge. I oh. do. I think there's a lot of hurdles yes. and you have a lot of things to overcome, mm. but I'm bullish on the idea. And, and BlackRock apparently is too. You're talking about over right. $150 million from BlackRock and Citadel invested. It's going to take a couple of years. I don't think that they're going to get a lot of companies to only list there, but they'll become right. kind of dual listing competitors with New York Stock Exchange. David Bonson, awesome stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it.